Yes. Yes. If you go to Amazon or whatever, you will find several of these uh, 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 products which have got uh, gels, they've got powders, uh, they've got uh, Tetra Pak juices, and all of them will give you wonderful uh, uh, descriptions of the benefits of having these uh, grasses. And uh, therefore, I saw that uh, I had earlier worked with the Malaysian government to develop a business model based on rice grasses, just like wheat grasses that the Western world does. Uh, we in Southeast Asia have got number of varieties of rice and rice grasses are actually one and a half times more potent and more nutritious than even wheat grasses. Therefore, I had developed a business model and that sort of uh, took off in a very nice way where they started. Of course, they do it in a very commercial way and they did a nice job of it. But when I did research on this, what I found was that what was the scientific basis for these cereal grasses to be so potent and so nutritious and have such benefits. So, I mean, being a scientist, I would like to go at it through the scientific methodology, because if you go to the naturopaths and uh, holistic healers and people like that, they've got awesome amount of literature. But I said, let me go to scientific literature that's been published in journals that are reputed. That means at least they should be corpus listed. They should be listed in the corpus appendum and they should be peer reviewed. Yeah. They, uh, that means other scientists should have reviewed that work and said, okay, or they may have redone uh, the experiment to see whether it can be replicated. And they said, okay, this is scientific uh, documentation. So when I went there, one of the things that all of them spoke about was this similarity between uh, uh, chlorophyll and hemoglobin. The structures are so similar. Hemoglobin, if, which you see on the right-hand side of the screen, is got iron in the center and chlorophyll has got magnesium in the center. But both of these are extremely similar molecules and as important as hemoglobin is to uh, the animal species, chlorophyll is to the plant species, but is there a overlap? That was what I was more interested in. Is there an overlap? And I found this incredible research where they studied a certain aphid under very cold conditions where energy was very less and under warm conditions. In warm conditions, the aphid would have a reddish color, which is basically a carotenoid pigment. But in cold condition, it would convert that carotenoid into chloroplast, into chlorophyll, which means this animal species would actually be able to harness the sun's energy. And this is very uh, incredible because uh, a lot of the benefits of drinking these ju uh, juices lies in intake of fresh chloroplasts, the chlorophyll that is there. And that is what we are going to really talk about. And if you see, for example, this beautiful article in the Journal of Physiology and Pharmacology, it says uh, effect of cereal grass on uh, wound healing, um, fibroblasts, cancer, and so many things that uh, are really very relevant to us. In fact, uh, there is an organization called Freedom from Diabetes, which is run by Dr. Pramod Tripathi of Pune, from Pune. And people who have gone to that clinic will vouch for the way he treats inflammation in the body by making every one of them drink fresh um, green, fresh juice of greens. Every day they have to drink a large quantity of green juice. And just drinking that brings their diabetes down immensely. It's not just diabetes, any inflammation in the body can, have, be, have, can get suppressed profoundly by the intake of fresh chlorophyll. Now, this to me is very exciting. Um, let's look at another one. I, there used to be a, a, a time when uh, one used to party a lot and therefore, you would drink and then you would eat very greasy food at night, late in the night and next morning, of course, lo and behold, you wake up with a hangover. And it was that time when uh, I got exposed to these uh, 
uh, wheatgrass juices. And I always used to find that this wheatgrass was an extraordinary antidote for uh, hangovers. Yeah, that was a very long time ago, another avatar of mine. Uh, but uh, if you see this particular article, which is from the Gener Journal of Membrane Biology, it actually talks about how um, high heptatoxicity induced by alcohol and uh, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, the oily, greasy food that we eat, how the wheatgrass has got uh, the effect on breaking that down uh, in the body. So to me now, it appears that this whole thing is fairly uh, intense because there is a lot of science behind uh, the, uh, these wheat grasses. And therefore, we were looking at several business models. Like I said, wheat grass is something everybody knows. But you have rye grass, you have barley grass, you have oat grass, you have corn grass, you have our millets like ragi, jowar, bajra, kodo millet, uh, rajgira juice. I mean, you have got so many varieties. And even within our wheats and rice, for example, Savita Ji has already started working on indigenous wheats and indigenous rice, more than 2000 years old in our country. Very exciting things. So without much uh, uh, ado, let, us, uh, let me just stop this uh, screen share. And let's go to Savita Ji, who is going to uh, take us through what she has been learning under my mentorship. And uh, let me bring Savita Ji online and uh, she can introduce herself in my mentorship program and show her what she is up to these days, building up a business model. Welcome Savita Ji, welcome. And you can take over from here now. Thank you Prabhakar Ji and welcome everybody to this. Yeah, thank you Prabhakar Ji and welcome everyone else to this fifth lockdown uh, home gardening nurseries. And Today I'm happy to be, uh, you know, also demonstrating something. And uh, as I, as Prabhakar ji said, I wanted to do something, you know, something where I could be, uh, you know, have satisfaction of growing something healthy, eating something healthy, and also uh, earn something, you know. So like had some business model also. So he showed me that, uh, of course, wheat grass is a lot of people are having, and it still has a lot of potential. But in India. Rice grass, very few people are having, and we should begin focus on rice grass and other grasses like barley and, as we said, um, corn and uh, rye and uh, ragi and all. So I started with some, and uh, today I can actually show you few. These are some of the grasses I've grown, and uh, I think this will give, make a great business model. So um, uh, I can show you. This is like uh, corn. And this is like a dry corn, just uh, with unsoaked. And this is like you can see the uh, these coming roots coming. And this is black wheat. Uh, this is a black wheat indigenous wheat which we have grown. This is a three day growth, and this is you can see the seven day growth here. And uh, here we have uh, bajra. Bajra I have grown. This is three day growth, and this is five day growth. So can you see? So we, I've been growing some of the seeds. Of course, today I could not show you all. And here we I have also soaked jowar. Uh, no, this is jow, barley. So barley I have soaked and I'll be making grass out of it because of the lockdown I could not get earlier. And there's certain other grasses I've grown. So Prabhagaji, should I show how we have done Sona Moti, which is a very amazing wheat grass, uh, wheat uh, variety, that indigenous wheat that you have discovered uh, in uh, Punjab. Uh, this was a, um, uh, this is the story goes like this, that uh, one farmer had uh, this very old variety of Sona Moti. Sona Moti also, Guruji, uh, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar has kept this name. It, this is an amazing, uh, has amazing nutritional value, value where it has very high uh, iron and very low glycemic index and very low gluten content. So it is very good for people who, uh, who, are, uh, who have gluten allergy and also who are diabetic. So we and can- folic uh, we, acid, And folic acid, yeah, don't very, forget Very, very high. In fact, the highest in any, among any cereal. Isn't it, Prabhakar ji? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, do you, would you like to see how I have grown? So what I have done is that this is a wheat, like you can see uh, uh, this, uh, just I have taken three tablespoons of uh, wheat, Sona Moti wheat. This is Sona, why we have called it like 
we call it moti because it's more rounded most of the wheats are elongated in shape but this is a round one and when after soaking it for about say i soak a between 12 to 14 to you know 16 hours so then after soaking it became like this uh, so it has swelled up and then what i do if we if I, we have to grow it hydroponically like without using soil so what you do is just while after soaking you you can take a tray and you keep a cloth cut of the you can cut it of the same size of the tray and you can take i have taken a white cloth you can take any color it should be just clean and then you take this uh, wheat um, uh, soaked sona moti wheat and this wheat is an amazing you know with amazing as we have shown um, you know uh, the nutritional value it is also very tasty and we have been having it for now over one year and all of us who have it we feel much lighter and my uh, iron content in the body has gone much higher but the iron hemoglobin has gone very high because of its high iron content so what yeah, we do is that we, in, let, let me just add in there uh, savita ji while you uh, spread that and go to the yeah. next step the sona mothi is yeah. actually it is a tetraploid durum wheat that was grown over uh, 2000 from 2000 years it has been grown in india way before the wheat revolution the green revolution happened unfortunately it had gone into disuse in the sense almost became extinct till an ashram um just outside uh, uh, amritsar uh, they there was an ashram where they gave us a small quantity of, of this wheat and then we multiplied it and today the farmers in punjab are so happy because they sell this at 70 rupees a kilo and their entire production is sold even before they harvest it uh, it is such a wonderful wheat but exploring whether how the grass of this wheat can be made into a business model is what i am really interested in and that's what i am trying to get uh, um our savita ji to do uh, you can continue now savita ji uh, you can proceed to the next step that that, that looks good now you can go yeah, on to the savita, next yeah, step now yeah. yeah thank you and so yeah so this is a beautiful story so here i have to tell you it has to be one layer compact uniform layer so you don't have to make many layers and it should be compact with you can fill it up nicely so that there'll be full growth so here now you can see that these this is a five, six day growth so these wheat you can see at the below and i can also lift it you can just it lift it yeah, yeah yeah i can show you this this is i have lifted up can you see it is like you know the the wheat is there down the roots are there and then we can see the grass coming up like this can so you this show is, how this have you spray the water and how you must yeah i am like i'm going to show i all, spray yeah? water because it's hot just now so i am using this spray machine which is very good spray bottle so i spray almost every 3 to 4 hours in fact you can also use this collins bottle if you don't have you can use this collin bottle and you can spray with this also it's very good so i spray uh, at least 3 to 4 times and here also you can see this is black wheat it's looking so black wheat um, uh, 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 these these uh, grasses they are looking so nice and here even they are bigger one these are bigger so you can see and today i have chopped off this much to you know make a juice so i you um, are going to make a juice in the mixer with water so this is an amazing thing for as pravaka ji said for chlorophyll and for you know increasing the blood count and i think this is uh, the way we can grow even uh, uh, the ba barley uh, no, this is bajra bajra we can grow like this and my we my rice have started getting the tails are coming out the roots although it is still needs to germinate because of the lockdown i could not get you can see small small white portions are coming out so within 2 3 days it will also come out so that was this thing and of course corn is going to grow very soon already you know we have got this much of growth is there and in 2 days time i think it will um it will start having greens coming although some of them are already having slight, like little bit greens are coming out can you see yeah here wonderful so, savita ji i mean that's a great display of uh, i mean i must really co commend you it was a lovely display of everything that you have put your heart and soul together and i have no doubt that uh, uh, we will be able to mentor a great business model from this uh, but what i would like the uh, participants to focus on is 
again we are doing something that is jugaad technology for the lockdown because many people don't have access to soil if you have soil and you're okay with that soil you can grow these grasses and microgreens and everything else in pots and things like that but Thank i thought you. you know something that is really a sort of uh, um, you know um, uh, a jugaad technology for this we just take a cloth a little shape of the base of the container put the seeds just one layer not more than that and the trick is to keep it moist but not drowning in water if you drown it in water it will start to smell and fungus will start to come over it it should be one layer don't make it too thick one layer keep it moist so in delhi and north indian climates right now spray every 3 hours a light spray keep it moist and it is very dramatic from the previous uh, episodes lot of you have sent me wonderful uh, videos and pictures i think the chickpea was a major hit because everybody seems to have succeeded in that um with chia a lot of you have got uh, uh, brilliant success a lot of you have done variations with mustard and flax seed and so many things even savita ji has worked a lot with flax seed which we will again go back to her for meanwhile savita ji is right now making the juice which is basically putting it into the mixture and uh, uh, getting a shot a nice little shot of uh, a fresh juice but what again i like about these cereal grasses is that we have so many like for example in india even today we have something like 25000 varieties of rice if you go to navadanya which is uh, dr vandana shiva's uh, ngo uh, she has a germ plasm of 25000 varieties of just rice indigenous rice now each of these rices are special these these varieties are special some are for aged people some are for infants some are for growing youth some are for pregnant women some are for women who are deficient in iron so we have a whole range and the same quality is exponentially expressed in the juices therefore you can actually have a whole range a commercial model where many many kinds of juices can be made from cereals cereals means they are monocots that means they come from the grass family like corn like rye like wheat like rice uh, like millets they are all from the grass family right so these cereals you can have juices then the second is that you can have powders dried powders are also equally effective and uh, if you go to uh, this dr pramod tripathi's uh, uh, clinic uh, or his treatment uh, he tells you to if you don't have access to uh, fresh greens he they give you powders which you can uh, mix just with water and warm water and have in the morning all very effective i'm not diabetic myself but i know enough about what he is doing and i, I think he is doing a excellent job while he concentrates on diabetes actually he could we could use his techniques for reducing any inflammation in the body inflammation means something's wrong with some organ somewhere or the other that's what it means so uh, there is a test called hcrp which will tell you that and uh, anyway let's not get into that we let's look at the cereal grasses so powders are the next thing that all of you can make you can just dry these grasses in shade you can make powders and you can store them so you don't throw away any excess things next is you can make gels like you could mix it with a sabza sabza gel gel so when you put sabza seeds or chia seeds or tulsi seeds you actually get a gelatinous mix you can put these juices into that huh? instead of putting water you put this juice get this gelatinous thing done put it into the freezer and whenever you want you can just mix it and have it so there are wonderful uh, business models that could emerge and i like to always mentor my students giving them uh, exciting business models uh, with which to work up with and uh, let's bring back sabita ji sabita uh, ji uh, this is a uh, vishnu bhog rice uh, which we had picked up once from your place only and this is sham jeera so some of the very beautiful indigenous uh, rice which uh, we can get from you also so you know the, and i have many more and this is a different variety from uh, punjab i forgot the name but this is vishnu bhog sham jeera and we also have two three more varieties in coming up in the ashram 
and uh, as i was showing you this this is the you know like you can see it comes like this with the cloth below and it comes like this so this becomes very neat what i wanted to add that time that when you grow without soil and if you don't want you know to go out in and all that so this is a very neat where it just straight comes up when you tie in a cloth it is very clumsy and very untidy but here very neatly you want you can cut grass or you can cut below and um, you can make whatever as prabhaka ji said yeah prabhaka ji was asking something like yeah uh, uh, basically uh, savita ji have you got the juice ready going or juice going or ready yet yeah it is getting ready i'll just get oh, it oh wonderful in yeah 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 you just come back by which time i will just uh, share some more things so um, um, i think our next episode of uh, uh, which is be episode 6 would probably be the last one before the lockdown gets lifted so we have something very exciting that's going to happen i will not share what i am going to do but i can assure you it will be very exciting uh, i have had a lot of people uh, tell me that uh, you know they have not received the links or they have not received the passwords but really when i tell them exactly at this particular time at 554 on such and such a day we sent you the mail they go check their email and they can see they say oh i'm sorry uh, you know we, yes we got the mail so i request you all to be a little more uh, uh, careful when you get the links and uh, we can so we had nearly 600 pre registrations which was very exciting but it it appears that there were a lot of people who had some issues or problems with logging in today uh, i really had to uh, switch off my phone because it was just full of calls saying how do i log in i, I would suggest that people take a little bit of uh, um uh, you know precaution you know precautions you know first check your link make sure you you've got your login if you don't call me before the uh, you know session starts so uh, thank you all again i mean we have a wonderful number 241 people uh, uh, in the room and uh, i think that's a great number for us so uh, i will send you all uh, by mail uh, the details and in the whatsapp group savita ji will put up the information uh, so uh, please uh, feel free to share this uh, with as many groups as you can and uh, the next episode will probably be the last so we will have something very very exciting for you before the lockdown savita ji are you ready with that uh, um, with the juice there okay she is still taking a little bit of time so uh, again coming back to the previous episodes i can say that most of you have had great success uh, trick of the trade again it should be one seed thick it should be always moist these are the two things if you can take care of the, these two things it will be wonderful wherever people have come back to me saying that something dried up or something didn't happen and i probed a little further it always came out that one time they forgot to put water or to keep it uh, moist and therefore you know you lose it savita ji you can uh, yeah prabhaka ji yeah, yeah prabhaka ji here is the green juice Oh, and wow. uh, i took out and i like i'm also sharing it with my daughter so it's like really nutritive and very refreshing i think immediately the pran shakti goes high with this you yeah, can see yeah absolutely and you know the what i really believe about this uh, cereal grass is when you drink the cereal grass based on the peer research peer reviewed research that i can see intuitively i believe what happens is that we are able to absorb the sun's energy directly uh not it is not unscientific it looks like chlorophyll when it goes into your body does something to the mitochondria it does something to the atp uh, uh atp is your molecular currency that's how energy is transferred between cells now it uh, if too much atp is produced the cell dies actually that's how cells die but chlorophyll goes and does something there that allows atp production without damaging the cells so something happens where we are able to absorb prana from sunlight and that's why people say you drink some wheat grass go for a walk in the morning you know in in, in sunlight and you come back really charged so i think uh, we come to the end of uh, today's episode and uh, i really uh, i i have 
uh, recorded your chat. So I will try and respond. Uh, I can see Ranjit Lal uh, very eager to uh, ask something, but I just have a minute more. But I do, sir, I will do, I will uh, respond to each one of you who have questions. So please type in your questions and uh, we would like to keep the 30 minute limit. And uh, Savita ji, therefore, any uh, final words you have, you have one minute with you. Yeah, it is just that I would encourage everybody to, uh, you know, grow these microgreens at home because not only it is nutritious, it is very satisfying. You know, every cereal, time that... Cereal grasses, not microgreens. Yeah, yeah. Micro, yeah, of course, cereal grasses and all these other things that you have thought like with the chana, with moong and grasses because they are very, very satisfying and the, when you grow them yourself, they're organic, they're absolutely... And I wanted to add that when you're selecting the seeds for growing any grass, make sure that they're organic and make sure they are good quality because on the quality of your cereal that the seeds you will get the you know the quality of the grass because sometimes when they're not organic they, they are not that good in uh, nutrition and also they don't grow well so and they should be not and also good. they may be treated with uh, chemicals uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, pesticide chemicals therefore we must use a uh, fresh organic seed yes thank you very yeah. much for thank that thank you I'm very sorry. much thank you thank you that. one and all and uh, again we thank savita ji for the wonderful presentation that we had and i will be mailing every one of you uh, links to our next session and uh, do spread the word and get more people and uh, uh, we will all meet up next friday at 4 30 p.m good evening to you all and uh, wish you all the very best and safe lockdown thank you so much prabhakari thank you